perk is a powerful single user system which can be connected to other perks forming a distributed interactive computing system. A network like this has all the benefits of a time-shared mainframe but without the drawbacks. Each user can have his own perk and it costs no more than running an equivalent mainframe service. A major feature of the perk is the high resolution video display which has full graphics capability. The resolution is much better than you can see on this recording and the apparent flickering that you may be able to see is, I assure you, not on the perk itself but is caused by the difference between the 60 cycle refresh rate of our perk system and the video recording system. The perk has a powerful CPU with 32-bit virtual addressing and a quarter of a megabyte of main memory. For backing store it has a 24 megabyte Winchester disk and also a floppy for bootstrap loading. The A4 size display has a resolution of 768 by 1024. To input information, the PERC has a graphics tablet and keyboard. The tablet can be used for freehand drawing and locating positions on the display. A high speed 10 megabit per second connection is provided to other facilities on the network. Text on the screen is contained in sub areas called windows. The perk is powerful and flexible enough to move these around quickly and to handle more than one window at a time. The speed and power of the display can be seen in this illustration of multi-channel seismographic data. Now let's add another window. This one is running the game of life. Note the variety of information types we have in the different windows and also how the windows are stacked one on top of another, just like sheets of paper on a desk. All the perk software is written in Pascal. Facilities are provided to create, delete and move windows around. They can be any size and contain any mixture of text and graphics. The flexibility and resolution of the display shows up well when high quality text is displayed. Note the different fonts and character sizes. Also, proportional spacing and justification. The perk improves on the capabilities of standard word processors and can display realistic approximations to the output from a photo typesetter. The perk's ability to move text around means that interactive, high quality documents can be constructed which include diagrams as well as text. For example, this particular diagram could be included in a business report. Not only diagrams but also photographs can be included. Here is an aerial view of Washington DC. The perk graphics as well as being high quality are also fast. You can read a document on a perk where the diagrams are moving. Much of the power of the perk is due to its microcode support for both Pascal and standard graphics operations. The user has full access to the micro engine and can tailor the microcode for his own purposes. As well as the standard RS-232 and GPIB interfaces, the PERC has the 10 megabits per second communications interface and a voice synthesizer so it can talk to you. We have illustrated here the main features of the PERC. High quality display, high-speed processor, local disk storage and high-speed connections to other devices. Such systems will have a profound effect on the way we shall do computing in the 1980s.
see, see the picture with the naked eye, you don't see any flicker whatsoever because the screen is very high quality. The PERC, as well as the high resolution video display, the PERC also has a keyboard and a tablet for good user interaction. It also has, in this box here, a very powerful CPU, quarter of a megabyte of main memory with a large virtual address space, a large hard disk and a floppy disk, all integrated into a single user system designed for desktop use. Such a desktop single user system can be connected together using a high speed local area network such as a Cambridge ring. Next to me here is a Cambridge ring built by the SRC. Such a high speed local area network can be used to connect perks to give access to uh, tape decks, to uh, more disk space in a distributed filing system and of course on the network can be other computer systems such as our Unix system here, other types of terminals, other computers in the laboratory and but ultimately other users. The PERC CPU is microcoded to be a Pascal engine with 32-bit segmented virtual memory system, a quarter, by, quarter megabyte of physical main memory, and a 12 or 20, 20, 24 megabyte Winchester technology hard disk. The display is an A4-sized high-resolution tube driven by a 768 by 1024 bitmap running at 60 hertz non-interlaced. This gives the extremely high quality. The text on the screen is contained in a sub-area called a window. The perk is powerful enough to be able to move windows around the screen in real time. The speed and power of the display are shown in this next demonstration. Here we've put up another window and within it we see multi-channel seismographic display uh, data being simulated as though it was coming in in real time. You can see here, as we zoom in, the high quality of the graphics ability and you saw how uh, graphics can be run in real time to give animation effects. We've now got two windows on the screen, here's a third and in this one we're running the game of life. Notice how the variety of the different types of information, the text and the graphics, note how they're all arranged in different windows and note how the windows are stacked one on top of the other, just like sheets of paper on a desk. In the jargon this is called the 2.5D graphics. The Perk software has facilities to create, delete and move windows around. Windows can be any size and contain any mixture of text and graphical information. All the Perk software is written in the high-level language Pascal, which the CPU is specifically designed to support, although other languages are possible. The flexibility and resolution of the display shows up well when high-quality text is displayed. Note the various different fonts. Note how there are different character sizes. You might just be able to see on this film how the characters are proportionally spaced rather than mono displaced as on something like a Diabolo. Note how the text is justified to both right and left margins. The perk goes beyond the capabilities of most word processors and in this move can actually give photo typeset quality output. The perk's ability to move text around on the screen means that high quality document preparation systems can be constructed which include diagrams as well as text. Here's a typical example of an illustration that you might put in a commercial business report. 
not only diagrams can be included. Um, let's put up another window. In this window we see an aerial photograph of Washington DC. Perk graphics are fast as well as high quality. If a document is not just prepared on a perk but is actually read by the uh, user of the document on the perk, some of the diagrams can be animated. So here we have the possibility of producing a book whose diagrams are actually animated. Much of the power of the perk is due to microcode support for Pascal and graphics operations. The user has full access to the micro engine and can, be, can prepare his own microcode if necessary. This gives this super fast quality graphics ability there, which is, comes because of the uh, high power display processor driving the bitmap display. Again, the user can prepare his own microcode to give access to 4K of 170 nanosecond microcycle time core. Eventually, the perk will be supplied with a connection to either an Ethernet or a Cambridge Ring local area network, which can connect the perk to other computers at raw speeds of around 10 megabits per second to form a distributed computing system. Another sophisticated uh, feature of the perk is a voice synthesizer. Just under the display here is a speaker and the hardware includes a voice, a speech synthesizer which can produce voice quality output. For conventional communications are provided by an RS-232 serial line interface and a IEEE 488 bus interface. Well that just about concludes a very good bit of The purpose of this program is to simulate how users of tomorrow will use their single-user machine.